Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're gonna be doing a test between the slow and sear and the Weber charring. Now we're gonna set both of these up and start them at the same time so we can get an accurate comparison between the two accessories. Right, so to set our slow and sear up, we're just gonna put our charcoal basket on the charcoal grate. And then you've also got a tray here, which not only acts as a drip tray, but it also forces the oxygen up and through your charcoal basket. And then we're gonna fill it up with briquettes. All right, and that's just about ready to go. And then on our second Weber, we've got the char ring here. So we'll put that down on our charcoal grate, and then we'll also fill this up with briquettes. And that's as easy as that. Now they're both pretty much ready to start. So both of these accessories hold just under three kilos of briquettes, so it's gonna be a really even test. Now we're gonna get both of these going the same way. You can either use fire lighters like I'm using today, or you could leave enough room for about 12 Ashdover briquettes to get it going as well. And then same thing in our char ring. And then we'll give them about 10 minutes to get our briquettes started. All right, so to finish setting up the slow and sear, we need to fill up our water pan. Just got some boiling water here. So our briquettes have caught light. There's a nice amount of heat there. So what we can do now is put our cooking grate on. And so we can keep a close eye on the temperatures throughout this test, we're gonna hook up a meat probe as well. So we'll place probe number one there. And then our char ring, our briquettes have caught light there. So we'll put our diffuser plate on. And then our cooking grate. And then probe number two, right there. And we'll get our lids on with our vents wide open for now and we'll get these up to temperature. So for this test, I'm gonna run both Webers at around that 250 Fahrenheit or 120 degrees Celsius range. Both lid vents are gonna stay open for the test and I'm only gonna control and stabilize my temperatures off using the bottom vent. So all I've gotta do now is bring these Webers up to temperature and stabilize them off. We'll check in throughout the test and then later on we'll see which accessory has produced the longest and most stable burn time. All right, we're sitting nice and stable at the moment. Both of our temperatures are pretty much the same, so We'll let these go for a while. We'll check back in soon. All right, so just over three hours in, as you can see, quite a bit of a temperature difference. So as you can see with our char ring set up, we're not cooking anything today. So there's nothing really in there to absorb any heat. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a water pan in just to help regulate them temperatures, bring it down a bit and make this a much more even comparison. We'll get our lid back on. So we'll have a quick look at the slow and sear. Let's say we're about a third of the way through. At the three hour mark, I did have to top up the water pan because it was getting quite low and our temperature was starting to rise. But once I filled that up, it came back down and stabilized off again. So we'll let this keep going. So we're now six hours in from when our Weber's hit temperature. We're gonna have another good look at them. But before we do, I just wanted to say, if you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing. It's a great way to show your support and that way you won't miss any of our new videos that are coming out. Right, so we're at 266 in the slow and sear and 287 in the charring. Let's open them up and have a good look. So the slow and sear, so the hottest part of this burn is right in the middle there. So I'd say we're just about halfway there. So we're definitely on track for a 12 hour burn. Now let's have a look at the charring. Right, and I'd say we've pretty much got half of our briquettes there left as well. So again, we're on track for about a 12 hour burn time. And as you can see, there's enough room between the diffuser plate and the cooking grate for a drip tray or a water pan. So we'll get this lid back on and let it keep going. We're obviously over our target temperature in both Webers, especially in that char ring setup. That's because we've only got a small water pan in there. You've got to remember if you had a big brisket in there or a big pork butt, something that's going to absorb a lot of heat, that's really going to help keep your temperatures stable. Because right now I've got my bottom vent pretty much closed. If I had a big brisket in there or something, I'd probably have it open about a quarter of the way. So we'll let these things keep going and we'll come back soon. All right, we're at the eight hour mark, 267 on the slow and sear, 273 on the charring. And we are about three quarters of the way through. So again, still on track for that 12 hour burn time. <laughs> While we've got a bit of time, let's go through a few other low and slow methods for the Weber. So let's imagine this is our charcoal grate. You can use two Weber charcoal baskets, just like so. We'll imagine the bowl of our Weber is sitting around here. So these would be hard up against the bowl of the Weber. You would fill up both your baskets, but you'd leave enough room here for about 10 to 12 Ashdover briquettes. So you'd put your Ashdover briquettes in here. They'd slowly burn through this pile here. And then through these vent holes here, these briquettes actually start catching light 
and then they slowly burn through this basket as well. So a very similar method to the slow and sear, but it just uses two charcoal baskets instead. And then probably one of the most commonly used methods would be the snake method. So that's just getting your briquettes, stacking them up in a domino fashion like so. We're not gonna do a full snake, we'll just do a mini one as a demonstration. So for these smaller briquettes, I usually go a two by two stack. If you're using bigger briquettes, you can go two on the bottom and then just one through the middle if you want. But like I said, these smaller briquettes are better off doing a two by two stack. So let's imagine you've built this snake most of the way around your charcoal grate. So to start your snake, you want your 10 to 12 Ashdover briquettes at the start going with the domino sort of fashion and then using your vent control, that's just gonna slowly burn throughout your cook lasting 10, 12, 14 hours. And then another method is using charcoal rails. These are another old Weber accessory. These just slot in to a Weber grate like so. You sort of put them back to front and that just creates a straight barrier so you can fill all of this up with your briquettes or your lump charcoal, imagining that around here is the bowl of your Weber. So as you can see, it's hard for briquettes to sort of fit through there so they're not gonna fall through. So they will literally just pile up from your charcoal rails to the bowl of the Weber. Again, leave enough room for about 10 to 12 red hot ones, and it works very similar to the slow and sear, obviously without the inbuilt water pan, but you can always put a water pan in on the other side here if you need. So we do cover off a few of those methods we just shown in a previous video we've done. I'll put a link down in the description if you wanna check it out. And I would recommend having a look online for the two accessories we're using today. There's lots of different variations and different businesses doing these types of accessories. So some are more expensive than others. So have a look online and find what's suitable to your budget if you are looking for something like this. And if you've got another method you'd like to share with us, let us know in the comments below. So we're gonna let these Webers keep going now and we'll be back once we are basically at the end of this burn. All right, so we're just over 11 hours into this test and over the last 45 minutes or so, I've just seen our temperatures start to dip. So let's open up these Webers and see where we're at. So as you can see, we're at 238 in the slow and sear and 268 in the charring. And we are right at the end of our briquettes in there. I reckon we'd still hold 225 for at least another hour. So that's 12 hours out of that setup. Let's have a look at this charring. So we were still holding 270 here. So we've still got quite a few briquettes that are going nicely. A few over here, a few unburnt down here. So I reckon there's still at least an hour and a half to two hours in there. So you're looking at 12 to 13 hours at least out of that. As you can see, the slow and sears back up to 237 now and that charring is climbing back up really fast. That'll probably stabilize back off at around 250 or even at 270-ish where it was before we pulled it apart. So both really impressive setups with great burn time. We'll definitely get 12 hours out of that slow and sear and I can see us getting at least 13 to 14 hours, maybe even more out of that charring. And the thing I love most about that charring is you don't lose any space on your cooking grate. So there you have it. There's a couple of really cool accessories for the Weber kettle. That'll make your life a bit easier when smoking meat.